Okay, we're learning one of humans' history, journeys, great accomplishment, changed the world. We talked about certainty in science last time. Know that, just know that, get that idea. But train yourself, challenge yourself, okay? Now we're gonna do two to a tie. So we've got puzzles and we, we, we wanna know as best we can, but we don't wanna just accept it even if it's the authority. So let's take a look at that. We're gonna talk about Ptolemy, like you don't pronounce the P, Ptolemy, I say it in the book, about 150 common era and Copernicus, 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 anyway. Around, uh, it's just to make it easy, right? You don't have to remember the exact date, you can if you want, but you put a zero on the end and you've got that. So let's take a look at that. And what, what do we have? What do we have here? We've got, uh, I mean, this is what we all agree on. We, again, you just see it, watch it. Let me show you what you got. Oh, yeah, that's, that's what I see. Eat sandwich, drink wine, of course. Everything's circling around Polaris and then. I see sun and moon and planets when I face south, if I'm in the northern hemisphere. Um, flipped if you're in the south. So we're trying to figure out what's going on. And, and all right, so let's, let's go over here. That, that's it. And make kind of quick work of this and let you read the book. I got, I got some things that I just want to say. Kind of, can, I, can I put that in between them? Yeah. All right, so again, it's, it's kind of a profound notion, a great example, there are many examples. History is a wonderful thing to study um, and it should not be made boring, right? You've got this list in a little more detail and some discussion in chapter three. Let me just hit the main ideas. We want to know a variety of things. Uh, do things go around Earth the way it feels? Or is, is Earth a planet? And it, along with the other planets, go around the sun, Helios. Heliocentric or geocentric? We want to know why we see planets in retrograde. And, and we'll get to why they're always in, in the uh, zodiac. So we've got these folks. So geocentric, Earth is at the center. Everything's going around Earth. It doesn't feel like we're moving. Uh, we can go all the way back to Aristotle, and it's, it's an incomplete list, we'll just say. Uh, over 2,000 years ago, you don't have to know the exact date, but over 2,000 years ago, Aristotle did that. Um, interesting little note I mentioned in the, in the book, and uh, I think it's, you know, everybody should have a sense of this, okay? So, and I didn't mention it before. There was a guy named Socrates, and he basically went around doing the certainty scale. And asking people, you know, well, do you really know? Do you really know? Now, if you do that to people that are wealthy and have uh, weak egos and uh, or are afraid of their power being taken away, you know, they're going to take care of you. And he was taken care of. That's a short story. Uh, he liked to engage in that process, not look for an answer. It's the process that's important, right? And so... Um, one of his students, you might have heard of Plato. And again, there's, there's a lot. It's good to get a, an idea of a lot of these things. You can do it a lot on YouTube or TED Talks, quick 15 minutes. That's really great. So you can piece this out. So don't be intimidated. You don't have to read every single volume. But Plato was a student and said, dude, Socrates, why don't you write that down? Because if I write the answer, no one's going to even question it. They're going to go, oh, that's what the answer is. I want to engage in this process of the certainty scale, the messy process, the no answer process. Plato goes, yeah, but you can't, you can't do that to everybody. Besides, they're going to kill you tomorrow. So Plato said, let me write down these dialogues. So I'll simulate that back and forth. So the Plato dialogues, Socratic dialogues written by Plato were interesting. And then Socrates uh, had, a, had a student, amazing student. You might have heard of him, Aristotle. Uh, and decided, well, why don't we just write everything down and did logic and systems, judicial systems, pretty amazing. That quite a, quite a good uh, thing going in a lot of ways. And it, it was brilliant, but they were looking up, right? Naked eye, naked eye, naked eye, all the way. You saw the scale it's, uh, for most of history, right? And they're still wondering what's going on. 
knowledge was used politically and things like that. Or we have knowledge and you know people were played, but nonetheless. So there was this guy Ptolemy. He actually uh, became pharaoh of a. Uh, of, uh, Egypt and, and there was, you know, there's a lot of mixing. It's just a, it's a very interesting story, and I'm not an expert on it, but but learn about it. So, very uh, interesting, uh, brilliant person, and so quite a bit. You're gonna get about 500 years between these two. 500 years, about. So it's a long, you know, it's a long time, right? And people don't live as long often. What did what did Ptolemy think? He said, well, first off, look, Aristotle said so, but he was more than that. He looked at the observations, right? And he said, look, sun and planets orbit Earth, geocentric. He said, and I'll tell you why you see what you see. They orbit now. I'm going to tell you a place where I cheated, because okay, the story is quite long. Really what he did was, was uh, a lot of uh, uh, rather complicated geometry. Um, and so it wasn't, he didn't really put Earth at the center. He actually shifted that and this was, so it, it wasn't as simple as this. But I don't think we need to, to go down that route. You can if you want, let me just say. So this is sort of a general geocentric picture. It's good enough, I think. Um, but if you like geometry and you really want to see what Ptolemy did and be impressed, you know, that's, that's great. Uh, go for it. So you got these, these things orbiting Earth, right? We're going we're gonna to build on this, so it's not going to go away. Then you go, well, okay, yeah. Well, if you think that's true, why do we see things in retrograde? Ah, I'll tell you why. Because when a planet orbits Earth, now the sun doesn't do this, right? But when a planet orbits Earth, Mars, Jupiter, it does this little circle on top of a circle. The word epi means on top of a circle. It's a circle on top of a circle. And if a planet were to move like this and you were looking up here, and it were to go, you go, ah! It's going backwards. Why? Because it's going backwards. It's in retrograde. Why? Because it's doing an epicycle. Why? Because I made it up. I just made it up. Do you know that's really going on? Are you an alien? Have you seen that? No. But I'm doing the math. I'm trying to match what we see. And he did a really good job. And it was a little bit off. And that's the trouble with being picky. Like, Oh yeah, I'm, we're certain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody was impressed. Like this, it was a tremendous, tremendous work. But what you find is he was wrong about this. Now we know. I'm going to say wrong. He was just generally wrong again. If anybody happens to be watching that knows the details, etc., is like, okay, yeah. I don't know why we need to go there for, for this point, uh, but wrong, and he was wrong here. So why are you learning about Ptolemy? Because he had an idea that was pretty high on the certainty scale. I mean, it was impressive. you got to go with it. And it was held, and it was like Ptolemy said, the great Ptolemy. And yes, good work, but it's a little bit off. I keep measuring it's a little bit off. Oh, well, we can solve that by putting a circle on top of the circle that's on top of the circle. And then I can put a circle on top of the circle that's on top of the circle that's on top of the circle, just to make that a little adjustment. The thing is, what he was doing is, he was making it in cycles, not just this fuzzy idea that I'm giving you, but he made it so that it would match all those years of observation that have been passed on. The timing of it, how long? How many days? How many days was it in retrograde? Etc. Amazing work. You know, I'm cheating by saying it was wrong because it was held, it was, it was high on the certainty scale. We come over here to the heliocentric view. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see it. Now, this Aristarchus, you know, well, I mean, great, great, right? But he said, 
everything's going around the sun. And he said that planets, including Earth, said Earth is moving. Like what? What? Earth is moving. And it's orbiting the sun, heliocentric, or sun at center, on circular paths. In fact, a little bit of history. I don't have to worry too much about this, but Copernicus kind of didn't like um, the way Ptolemy actually shifted the center a little bit. He was actually, Copernicus, I don't want to do too much, but Copernicus actually kind of wanted to go back to Aristotle's perfection. He was kind of still he was tied, very interesting, just read a little bit about it. He was tied with the church and he had this ideas and this personality, just an interesting personality. Um, we're talking about at a zero, so that's well over more than a thousand years later. In the book, I noticed that I, the, at least the first edition, it's got AD here and BCE there, but I, I don't know why I don't know the, that got changed in the editing, because but anyway. Common era. Uh, Copernicus goes, planets equate. And now we know that he was correct. We know that now. But perfect circles, kind of like Aristotle, everything perfect circles, but we're moving, we're not at the center. And this is where Copernicus was wrong. And remember, we're making this drawing, our artistic side and our mathematical side, and we're trying to have everything go around so that it matches all the observations and the timing of it. It's a very, it's not easy, especially if you haven't got a calculator on a computer. How do you explain retrograde? This is beautiful. And it's right. Sun at center. I'll check to make sure you see this. Sun at center. Ooh. Earth orbiting. And some planet here. And you're gonna, we're gonna build on this. Talk about Kepler's laws and things like that. And so this will add to this. But he said, look, drive down the freeway and pass someone. You know, just step on the gas. No, no. But pass someone and then point at him. Maybe you should be in the passenger seat. As you point at someone, go like this. Watch, I'm going to point at you. Oh, you're going backwards. What's wrong with you? Why are you going backward on the freeway? You're not going backward on the freeway. You're just passing them, right? But they, if you point at them, they'll look like they're going backwards. So if you pass, and you're going faster, and actually planets farther up go slower, so... You can go, hey, you're going backwards. And then you come around, and then it looks like normal again. And then you pass them again and go, oh, you're going backwards again. Why are you doing that on the freeway? By Earth passing the planet. Now, the ones in here actually kind of, from Earth's view, do go, they go back around. So if seen from Earth, these kind of, you know, so Mercury and Venus. But uh, anyway, that's correct. Now I want to make a point, and, and we're, gonna, we're almost done here, so okay? Just get this sense, and we won't, I won't drag you through that rather long story. Because of holding on to Aristotle's perfect circle idea, but throwing out the geocentric, and it seemed right. Galileo actually thought it was true. He was working at the same time as Kepler, that's later. But because of that, it turns out that this system, which we're about to look at next, this system didn't quite match, it was a little bit off from the observations, the way when you do the timing of everything. Meanwhile, Ptolemy was also a bit off. Well, he was wrong about everything, you can start there. But I mean, did it, you know, super job at being wrong. <laughs> like, you, couldn't, you couldn't have done a better job being wrong than Ptolemy. Um, but he was a bit off, and so he kept, like, it was kind of getting messy. So people were leaning towards us, but they were both off a bit. So, on your certainty scale, who's right? Back in the day, you don't know. Now, yeah, we know. We, we can get off the planet, right? We got these guys, the aliens and everything. So, um, 
So that's why I say it's a tie. You might say, and people, a lot of people did say, yeah, this seems cleaner and it seems to, you know, a lot of evidence, and this, this kind of makes sense. And then you've got to ask, well, why don't we feel like we're moving? Ah, touch on that a little bit here. You know, lots of good questions. And so just having these ideas and then being honest leads you to do what? Measure more. Question it. Look more carefully. Be a bit skeptical. Even if you want this to be true. Even if you want that to be true. The trouble happens is that if you adopt a system and you say that your system is not only based on Ptolemy, but it's based on talking to God, divine knowledge, and you're shown to be wrong, you might be shown to be wrong about this too, right? That's pretty threatening to your power structure. We're getting into that. Let's do, uh, let's do our heliocentric alignments because we know what's true. Heliocentric is correct. We've come a long way. So let's take a look at that and then we'll, we'll see how we validate that. Okay.